This is Jenny Fern, and today I would like to share with y'all a little project that I worked on to convert an old concrete sink into a little planter. Um, <laughs> so when I first bought this place, or at least first put in an offer on this house, um, there's the process of like inspections and visiting the house before you know all of the paperwork fully goes through. And during that time, I, um, we, we came to visit to maybe like sign some paperwork or something. Um, maybe it was to do the inspection, I can't remember. And um, there was a leak. <laughs> there was, for some reason, um, the water line to the washer just wasn't functioning anymore. Um, it wasn't really a pre-existing problem. And I guess just because this house had been sitting without people using it frequently, it had, a, it had an issue. And at that point we also discovered that the concrete sink that was in the garage um, had a big crack in the back of it. So we had this sink, um, you know, not functional. It was moved out of the garage into like our little side yard area. And I have had dreams of turning that into a little planter box um, because it already has drainage, <laughs> has a, a hole through the bottom, so it's not just like a, a solid basin, you know. Um, and it's a pretty cool thing, um, and it has this uh, metal frame that it sits on. Um, so, yeah, I. <laughs> I enlisted a help of some strong men to um, move it out. It's incredibly heavy um, and very um, scary <laughs> to move because the metal thing's all wobbly. And um, then if you drop the concrete, it's super busted. That was moved onto this little um, concrete um, pad um, that goes right off into the grass off of the patio area. And so from there, I was going to put some herbs and kind of more shady liking things because um, it is a relatively shady area. I'm a very cheap person and we had three bags of potting soil um, purchased from some uh, like home, not home goods, what is it called? Like home improvement slash garden store. So I had three bags of soil, and that's like pretty much my allotment for quite a while. Um, and I'd already used, I think, a full bag for um, potting up little um, plants, little transplants for the garden, um, which I do in the little reused plastic cups and drill some holes in the bottom of them for drainage, and then fill those up with good soil and put those out. And right now I don't have like compost that's able to be used as potting soil or as like a, a seed starting soil. So I'm working on it. <laughs> I have a lot of compost in the mix, but for now um, I just have limited amounts of soil and filling up a whole big sink with potting soil wasn't really something that I was going to do. <laughs> I'm sure it's an option, but um, it's that would have taken a lot of bags, really, honestly. Um, so there's something that um, I've seen on gardening YouTube channels called um, Hoogle Culture, which I think is mound, like a mound growing um, method. And what it is, is you dig a trench or a hole, and you put in wood, like wood debris, so sticks and logs and stuff like that, basically like your unwanted wood debris, <laughs> and you fill the hole with that, and then you put your dirt back on top, and then you have a big mound. Um, I'm sure you can add additional amendments and all that. Um, and then the idea of this, I'm guessing one, it gets rid of all of your unwanted wood, and then the second, the second thing that's useful in general for a gardener 
is that um, over time as the wood is um, you know slowly um, degrading and, and uh, composting the uh, wood gets more porous and more uh, able to absorb water and is releasing water slowly like a sponge. So it's good for water retention and water use. So I thought that's a great idea. I live in a very hot, dry climate during summer, so let's try this out. Um, so I mean, and also it'll take up a lot of the space that dirt takes up. That's the idea. So I filled up the bottom with um, a few old firewood logs when we had bought this place. The uh, previous owners had left a pile of firewood out on the side yard. And <laughs> the other the other thing about this house, the fun thing, um, the chimney, it, like if we use the fireplace, the chimney is a huge fire hazard. So until that's repaired, we are not using the fireplace. So something that unfortunately I did not record was the process of me putting these logs into the bottom of the basin. And again, this is with the intention that the wood will act like a sponge and be able to absorb water and then release water when needed eventually. I put in this firewood into the bottom and I felt like maybe I was doing something a little bit too weird and that probably wouldn't work, so I did not film it because sometimes you just get that way where you think, maybe this is too experimental. <laughs> Even though people before me have done this, maybe it's a little too much. <laughs> so I put the logs in um, and then after that I um, shoved in some packing paper. Again, having moved, we have a lot of this um, paper used to pack um, glasses and delicate items. Um, and I shoved that into the crevices and put a little extra on top to um, help increase the volume of not soil. Um, and then I had some twigs, broke up some twigs there. At this point, I was like, well, I'm very much committing to this, so I might as well film it. So you get to see me breaking some twigs. <laughs> so um, yeah, then filling it up with other wood debris. I don't have a ton because we don't really have trees or bushes or shrubs or really any plants that are not soft. So after I filled up kind of the bulk of the bottom, maybe about half of it, um, half of the planter height, um, I then sacrificed an entire bag of soil to this planter and poured it all in, which is kind of a lot for me. <laughs> uh, seeing as I am kind of running low now and I have plenty of seeds that I still want to plant. Um, we'll have to figure out something. Um, the compost is taking too long, is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so I then filled the top with maybe two inches, maybe more, of cut grass mulch. So uh, I have quite a large lawn, and even though I've converted my front lawn into uh, like squash and beans and food up there, um, the backyard is still a huge lawn. There's a lot of grass. So I have a lot of grass clippings to work with. Because we don't water the lawn in summer, it doesn't grow at a very fast rate, and we also do end up having quite a lot of, like, seedy weeds, so that can be a bit of a problem using it as mulch, but it helps retain the moisture as well as providing some extra nitrogen and nutrients and protection, uh, maybe a little little space for critters to hang out, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I uh, put that as a fairly thick layer over top of the soil, again adding some mass to this whole box that isn't me spending money on soil. Um, and then from that I took my containers that I had 
um, with seeds that had already sprouted. Because this was kind of like a spur of the moment kind of thing, I just put in what I thought would be good. So I put in some thyme, I put in some purslane, I put in some amaranth. I don't know if the amaranth is going to do well because it I kind of have a feeling that it likes full sun. Um, also some flower seeds. I put in some chia, which again I'm not sure if it prefers full sun or if it's okay with shade. Um, but that's kind of what I was putting in there. I'm hoping in the future to put a lot more... Oh! I think dill. Either dill or fennel. I've had almost no luck with in my actual raised beds because they just shrivel up and die. <laughs> I'll get them to be like a pretty nice seedling and then they get hot and can't handle it. So I'm gonna wait for either, yeah, like late fall, maybe just like actual winter to grow those things as long as they aren't frost tender. So um, yeah, I definitely will fill up this planter with more herbs like sage, oregano, maybe some rosemary, stuff like that, um, and have it be another little herb garden. I have a little, like kind of like a window box sized herb garden, and that works fairly well. Right now it's almost entirely oregano and thyme. So that's the whole plan with this uh, sink planter, and kind of a way to do things cheaply and resourcefully, and uh, I don't know, hopefully we'll get some good results from it. I'm a little bit worried about its shady positioning, but it was the concrete pad that it ended up on, so that's where it is, and it's not moving anywhere. So we'll see how it does throughout the winter when it will really be in a shady position if um, some of those herb plants will do just fine. Um, that's my hope. Oh, and I've been noticing, so I'll water it in the evening, and I'll notice that there's still water um, kind of at the base where the spigot, not the spigot, the downspout? I don't know. I don't know what you call it. The thing that has the water leave the bottom of the sink. Um, at the bottom of that, there's still like quite a bit of water um, kind of late into the day. So I feel like the water retention is actually quite good um, compared to it just being like some loose potting soil in there. So I'm hoping it pans out. We'll see if it's like a lush.